Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue on with our journey, our exploration through the recent releases made by the Criterion Collection during this year of 2021. And that brings us to that title, which has been designated by Criterion at spine number 1068. This is the work from 1985. The filmmaker is Joyce Chopra. And the name of the work is Smooth Talk. work that is from 1985 and it is directed by Joyce Chopra and it is based upon a story written by Joyce Carol Oates called Where Are You Going? Where Have You Been? And it is a film starring Laura Dern and Mary Kay Place and Treat Williams and others. It is the very compelling work called Smooth Talk. And I think if we were to try to focus in on the story uh, the plot of this film, we would uh, maybe be drawn to the main character of this work, who is Connie, the teenage girl who is played by Laura Dern. And we see in this film her various interactions with certain characters in this small town uh, community of sorts. And those characters that she interacts with, she interacts with, excuse me, are, for example, her friends, her close-knit circle of friends, and we see them hanging out. We see them listening to music, having a good time, going to the mall, and those sorts of episodes of what one might describe a sense of childlike innocence on display, or that being part of the daily fabric of their lives. And also we see in Connie's story her interactions with her family and also in particular her mother, played by Mary Kay Place, which is a very fundamentally important relationship that is explored in this film. And also we see Connie's, say, her view of the world, her interaction with the outside world and various characters that inhabit that outside world. And this forms part of what one might call the film's focus on the this period which is like a transition from childhood into adulthood and all the nuance and complexity that such transition brings along with it. And I use the words nuance and complexity, especially in the context of Connie's story in the film Smooth Talk, because there are moments in this film, as I alluded to earlier, where there is a sense of, say, childlike innocence on display. There is a sense of of a wonder in terms of the expression of, say, exploration based on, for example, uh, curiosity about sexuality and talking about boys and going to the mall and that kind of context. And so there is this innocence uh, that is part of that transition that is part of the story told by Joyce Chopra. But that's not all, because there's also a, 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 an embedded sense of confusion and alienation and not being sure about one's position and one's surroundings, which is also part of this transition and this story and this emotional exploration on the part of Connie, and it's captured so well by Joyce Chopra, and also in particular by the performances. Laura Dern's performance is magnificent as Connie because it also captures the sense of being alienated and not feeling like one uh, fits in to the particular place that she is in. And this is very key too because the story uh, is focusing in, or say the, uh, the, the, the film focuses in on the way in which Connie is essentially growing up. And in, during this period of growing up, she is 
uh, seem to be perhaps contemplating her own self and her own individuality and who she is as a person, as a human being. So her own self-reflection is on display on the one hand, but also she is, as part of her journey or exploration, she is also contemplating her place or her position vis-a-vis the outside world and how she is to interact with the outside world as a human being, as an adult. And so this forms also part of those scenes in the film where we see her trying to interact uh, with, say, different parts of the community and different crowds and trying to meet new people and the the confusing nature and not being sure about what to do uh, those things are also on display so this is what i mean when i talk about a sense of confusion and also a sense of alienation too because parallel to this we have her family and we have her relationship for example with her mother which is very complex and there is a sense of not necessarily fitting in and the one, uh, there are areas where one uh, might feel more and more separate from uh, that family unit that once was a very strong, maybe uh, a sense of bond uh, when one was younger. But as one gets older, there's a sense of maybe not being sure, not necessarily relating to the people that are part of that family. And uh, this also leads uh, or relates to the sense of alienation. And so this all becomes part of this uh, element or uh, uh, self-exploration and transition, as I say. But that's not all, too, because the story or the film also gives a, gives us yet another layer in this transition story or this exploration, thematic exploration of the transition from childhood into an adulthood, and that is one of of danger and of the, uh, the the fear and the horror and the frightening aspect of the outside world and all the terrors and dangers that come with it. And this is exemplified, of course, in various episodes, but perhaps most vividly and most significantly, this is exemplified in the film in Connie's interaction with the character of Arnold Friend, played by Treat Williams. And uh, this is uh, directly relevant to the plot because it propels the plot towards a type of of a confrontational aspect of this interaction. And we see how Connie has to try to, in essence, fend for herself against the various uh, uh, potential threats and suggestions of violence, of uh, also of an emotional and psychological level and how she is trying to deal with this and process this and how she will be able, if at all, to protect herself and what will the result be. And so this is the other aspect of this story from childhood into adulthood, one of danger and one of threat and one of uh, quite uh, potentially horrifying consequences. And so it is a very multi-textual uh, a thematic uh, concern that we have on the part of Joyce Chopra telling the story of smooth talk. In this context, I think the film provides a number of, of uh, points of consideration uh, in terms of the way the story is told and Joyce Chopra's filmmaking craft uh, that is, I think, quite bold and magnificent. I should say in that context that Joyce Chopra and her cinema and the way that she's telling the story never gives any sense of moral judgment on the part of her characters in this film. In other words, there is no sense of judging uh, Connie and her choices and her actions. Uh, And we see, of course, her interactions with her mother, for example, and there might be some sense of maybe being judged or something as part of that uh, a plot line or subplot, but as far as the camera viewing her, there is no sense of that. And so, in other words, Joyce Chopra's camera provides an earnest look at this uh, story of exploration and transition, which I think is very important because it gives us an, a good faith, earnest view uh, and a human uh, uh, feel to this character and allows us, the viewer, to understand Laura Dern's Connie in a way that makes her a a living, breathing 
uh, character come to life and she is concerned uh, with matters that uh, might concern any of us uh, in terms of of uh, the the, uh, uh, the 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 transition uh, into the world of adulthood and uh, all that uh, implication uh, that brings with it so uh, that is one of the strengths of Joyce Chopper's camera work uh, uh, camera and cinematic craft here and also I should say that uh, it is uh, quite a uh, important way to view it because it allows also us to really focus in on the nature of Connie's exploration because after all her story is uh, about many things it's about for example her examination and self-evaluation and self-reflection about herself and who she is as a woman, as an individual, as a human being, as she is growing up and as she is experiencing feelings of curiosity as well as alienation, as well as confusion. And amongst that, trying to figure out who she is on her terms. So that's the first thing that's important about her journey. The other thing that's important about that journey, of course, is related to that. It's also about Connie and how she views herself vis-a-vis -vis the outside world. In other words, how she sees her interactions with various characters and how this is very much part of her own journey into uh, the world of adulthood. And so it's just it's about how she views herself and also how she views her interactions with the outside world. And also the story also brings us how she in that context deals with the realization as to how the outside world looks at her and how her view of herself vis-a-vis -vis the outside world maybe clashes or collides with how the outside world views her. Uh, this leads to themes and concerns about objectification uh, on a, uh, maybe on a sexual level. And also this leads, I think, in a direct way and also in a very metaphorical way into the one of the key sequences of the film, namely her interaction with the character of Arnold Friend and wh what he represents uh, directly uh, but also on a, a metaphorical level uh, in terms of how the outside world vis-a-vis uh, -vis his character views her and therefore in that context how she will deal with that and how she will be able if at all to establish her own sense of identity and also protect herself will she be able to do this or not this is part of the ambiguity of the film and this is something that uh, we as viewers are uh, confronted with when we watch this and so uh, this is to say that the film perhaps doesn't provide easy answers to this and it does maintain a sense of complexity and nuance and ambiguity that i think is uh, indicative of the earnest take that Joyce Chopra is adopting when she is telling this story, Smooth Talk. Uh, it is a, a remarkable uh, achievement. And I should say, too, about this sense of ambiguity, one of the great uh, aspects of the storytelling craft here is uh, there is a sense of contrast. Uh, the way that the film and Joyce Chopra captures the concept of contrast in various forms is so, uh, so remarkable. For instance, the contrast of childhood versus adulthood. And also within the transition, there is the, con the sense of contrast between the sense of childlike wonder and innocence and curiosity on the one hand, and confusion and ambiguity and, uh, and alienation and threat and menace and violence on the other. And so there is this vivid contrast drawn up there. And the contrast too within Connie, how she is trying to uh, view herself vis-a-vis -vis the outside world versus how she realizes how the outside world views her. And this is all portrayed metaphorically and also directly, as I say, I would suggest in the relationship or the interaction, shall I say, between her and uh, the Treat Williams character. And so this idea of contrast is very important. Also on a visual scale, we see certain signifiers or symbols that are on display. Uh, I, I, I think it's... it's uh, it's uh, no coincidence that, for example, there is a lot of, of small town Americana on display. You can see the architecture of the houses, the, the, the sunshine on these uh, residential neighborhoods, the small town field, the mall, uh, the uh, young kids hanging out. Uh, there is a sense of the 
uh, of a type of security, if you will, uh, or the sense of the known and the familiar uh, in these, say, symbols of uh, of uh, this type of uh, uh, community on the one hand, but then it's suddenly and abruptly uh, broken, if you will, with the sudden bursts of of the emergence of threat and menace and violence. And that's to do with, as I say, the Arnold Friend character and all that that implies. And so this type of contrast between the seemingly safe and famili familiar versus the sudden emergence of threat on the other. This is also uh, embodied so effectively by Joyce Chopra. And so this idea of contrast uh, is expressed in various modes and styles here uh, to tell her story and also always linked to Connie's story. This is one of the great and remarkable things about this film, Smooth Talk. And so I'm so glad that it emerges like this in the Criterion Collection because it, it, it maintains uh, a type of relevance and uh, uh, accessibility and also there is this sense of 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 the camera and the uh, and the filmmaking style really giving us an earnest portrait this uh, uh, wonderfully portrayed and and complex portrait of uh, exploration and journey with the focus being on this character of Connie uh, in this remarkable work from Joyce Chopra which is called Smooth Talk this is the Criterion Collection Blu-ray, which is purported to be based upon the new 4K digital transfer of the film, which is also described as being supervised by the director, Joyce Chopra herself. And the presentation and the overall package here from Criterion is well worth checking out. Um, and it also has a number, uh, quite a number indeed, of supplements that are so uh, illuminating and so, I think, meaningful in terms of a further exploration of this film. I strongly recommend checking those out if you can. And what are those supplements? The first set of supplements here is uh, called short films. And these are short films prepared and made by Joyce Chopra. And there are three of them. And they are documentaries each of them. First is Joyce at 34 from 1972, uh, excuse me, approximately 27 minutes. And this is also uh, uh, made by uh, Joyce Chopra and Claudia Weil. And the second film is Girls at 12, 1975, approximately 30 minutes. And then the third film is Chloré and Albi, also from 1975, approximately 36 minutes. So we have these three short films, these documentary films, Joyce at 34, Girls at 12, and Chloré and Alby. And these works are, are incredible. In their own ways, they are incredible. And there's another supplement that I'll talk about momentarily where Joyce Chopra speaks about her career, and she speaks during that conversation about her work on these three films, respectively. But uh, the first film, Joyce at 34, is... It could be said in many ways to be a type of self-portrait because uh, the Joyce of the title is referring to Joyce Chopra. And this is uh, a period in her life where she is uh, giving birth to her child. And also we see her uh, uh, wanting to raise her child, but also wanting to establish or reestablish her career and how her uh, career is maybe affected by uh, her, uh, uh, her uh, maybe her uh, new life as a mother. And also we see the generational uh, considerations of motherhood and parenthood vis-a-vis uh, -vis, um, uh, further discussions in the film. And so uh, this is a type of, uh, well, this is a remarkable film because it shows Joyce Chopra uh, as a human being and also her uh, intimate uh, aspects of her life uh, and her career and she is putting this on display for us and trying to express in terms of as I say her own life aspects of 
of motherhood and career and individuality versus uh, uh, the desire and need to want to take care of one's family and also how this consideration might differ. It might differ. It might not differ, but it might differ depending on on generational considerations. And so it is very uh, a very powerful portrait. I should say too, just in case you're interested, that the work Joyce at 34 also appeared as a supplement in this particular Criterion release, uh, Girlfriends, which is the film by Claudia Weil. So uh, you can find Joyce at 34 here, or you can find Joyce at 34 as part of the supplements package here. And please check it out if you can. It's, I strongly uh, recommend it. And then the second short film is Girls at 12. And this is remarkable. Girls at 12 is uh, essentially a documentary about a group of uh, friends who are uh, at this age. And I understand that uh, it's uh, in Massachusetts. And we follow them and we see them and their transition uh, growing up. And we see their interactions with each other and uh, the innocent nature of their interactions. But also we see how they are uh, trying to cope in the school environment and we see how maybe uh, some of the uh, children who were uh, academically excellent uh, early on suddenly uh, became not so academically excellent and perhaps we see some of the reasons as to why that could be the case uh, in terms of their uh, uh, in terms of the types of uh, social uh, uh, mores, if you will, or maybe social conventions that seem to be displayed here uh, at the time, and in particular with respect to the role of women in society and how this affects uh, even uh, people as young as, say, 12 years old. And so this is a very powerful work in that aspect. It is also, in many ways, like Smooth Talk, a a depiction of the transition from childhood into adulthood. And uh, in fact, uh, Joyce Chopra in one of the supplements will remark upon this. And there are a number of similarities between Girls at 12 and Smooth Talk. So in, they have a spiritual connection in that way. So I would strongly recommend to watching Girls at 12 if you can. Uh, it is really a brilliant depiction. And also yet another brilliant uh, depiction is the third of the short film documentaries here, which is Chloe and Albie. And this is focusing in on two friends, uh, Chloe and Albie of the title. And one of them has a, uh, is a, a single mother uh, with uh, children, and the other is trying to uh, study to get her degree. And we see that they were friends from a young age, but given their set of circumstances, relatively speaking, we understand that their lives are probably going to diverge, even though they want to maintain their friendship. And so we follow each of them. And again, the considerations about motherhood, about raising children, about, again, generational concerns in the context here of Chloe and Albie, uh, it's about how how important the, uh, the, uh, the idea of support from one's parents is, uh, that how, this idea of how important that support is, and that's expressed so, I think, lovingly in a particular aspect of, of uh, these uh, people that we meet. And there are also concerns about race, and uh, uh, that uh, uh, the film is exploring that to a certain degree about how uh, they, uh, how race and education may have affected certain choices of some of these people. And so uh, Joyce Chopra in her documentary style is so, uh, so earnest in her uh, sense of exploration and respect for the people that she is depicting and covering here. And so Chlorine and Albie is another great example of this. So uh, Chlorine and Albie from 1975, the third of the three short films. Please check out all three if you can. They are really uh, quite exciting and they lend further, uh, uh, further room for exploration into the world of Joyce Chopra's cinema. Uh, so, uh, and they, in that way, they are very relevant to a discussion of smooth talk. So please check those out if you can. I strongly recommend them. And then continuing on, there is a second group of supplements, which is called Joyce Chopra. 
And this is a set of two interviews. The first interview is described as being from 2020, and this is a video interview, a one-on-one -on -one interview with Joyce Chopra herself. It's approximately 17 minutes. And here she talks about many things. She talks about her career, about how she wanted to become a filmmaker, uh, in giving examples of uh, or the context of, say, Joyce at 34, and uh, she talks again about Girls at 12, and then uh, Chloe and Albie. And then she talks about her films like Smooth Talk. And in this conversation, for example, she gives us details as to how, in her view, certain scenes in Girls at 12 are echoed or mirrored in Smooth Talk. There's a particular moment where uh, one of the girls is sitting on her bed and uh, stringing beads and that has a very strong parallel echo with a scene in uh, Smooth Talk involving, involving Laura Dern, her character Connie, sitting on the bed uh, with beads, uh, string. And that has this, it, it's uh, somehow capturing the innocence of the moment while also reminding us of the type of threat that is on the periphery or the outside and so that echo is very powerful and that's an example of, of why the Joyce Chopra discussion here is so valuable and so insightful. Uh, she also has among her many great and insightful comments a lot to say about smooth talk and about uh, the uh, the complex uh, natures of, of uh, what she was trying to explore in terms of the story of this young teenage character and how that might have echoes in what she wanted to explore in her other works. And also she's talking about her career and the idea of, of uh, how she regards herself in her work. And she makes a very profound statement about how she doesn't consider herself to be a woman filmmaker or a female filmmaker. She considers to be herself to be a filmmaker, a filmmaker who happens to be a woman and who therefore uh, brings to the table as a filmmaker all of Joyce Chopra's experiences and, uh, and life concerns and perspective uh, as a person, as a woman, as Joyce Chopra. And I found that statement to be very profound. And I think it's also very indicative of how uh, uh, one can further explore or gain perspective on the cinema of Joyce Chopra, including Smooth Talk. So uh, this interview is uh, very, very engaging and insightful. So please check it out if you can. But that's not all because there is also a 1985 uh, audio interview KPFK Radio, and the interviewer is uh, Jay Kugelman, and he is interviewing Joyce Chopra. Again, it's 1985, so it's contemporary to the times that Smooth Talk was released, because this is a 1985 film. So uh, Jay Kugelman is speaking in very glowing terms about his admiration for the work Smooth Talk, and it's a great conversation because they go into some detail. There is some very friendly also debate in some areas about what certain parts of the film might mean or signify, and so it is an overall incredibly uh, robust and uh, excellent interview and discussion, and we get further detailed insights from Joyce Chopra about the film Smooth Talk in particular. So uh, this is approximately 29 minutes overall and highly, highly worth it. Uh, please check it out if you can, the 1985 radio interview, the audio radio interview. Then we go to another category of supplements, which is called the Women of Smooth Talk. And this is great because this is a September 2020 Film at Lincoln Center discussion. It's an online discussion, and it is moderated by the great Alicia Malone. And joining her in this, I think it's a Zoom conversation, uh, we have Joyce Carol Oates and Joyce Chopra and Laura Dern. And they have this conversation. It's approximately 56 minutes. It is great. And Alicia Malone does a fantastic job to moderate the discussion and to guide the discussion, asking questions in a thoughtful and balanced way. 
And you can also tell that she is so much in admiration of this film and also the Joyce Carol Oates story. And you can tell that because of her, of the way that she is so helpful in guiding the conversation along. And the way she guides it along is she addresses, for example, uh, Joyce Carol Oates and the story. And there are certain uh, similarities and differences between the written work and the film Smooth Talk. And they also go into some of those choices that make those nuanced differences what they are, uh, which is a very fascinating discussion. In particular, for example, they talk about certain changes that were made to, say, the dialogue of, of Arnold's friend, for example, and uh, what Treat Williams did in order to change some of those, uh, some of those uh, lines. And uh, Joyce Carol Oates, I think, is, is, and Joyce Chopra have this wonderful conversation. And Joyce Carol Oates is so also uh, very much uh, expressing her admiration of the film, how she views Connie as portrayed by Laura Dern, which is such a great part of the conversation. And this also uh, lends itself to Laura Dern's participation here, which is brilliant. She brings up uh, some interesting, a lot of interesting points, uh, one of which being the uh, how she dealt with the reaction of the film. And it was an interesting thing about how uh, she essentially encountered maybe two categories of reaction. First, there was the category of people who, say, reacted to her and who could understand her story from an emotional and personal level. And then there were the, there's the other reaction, which was to say that, say, oh, she was so beautiful and she was so sexy in the film and that kind of reaction. I think that is really kind of a profound anecdote because it also goes into the really complex nature of the filmmaking craft of Smooth Talk because it is a film. It is a film that, as I was mentioning, it's a film that captures contrasts. And one of the ways I think it does this is is showing us the uh, the image of of Connie. Uh, and while we are watching this image of Connie as portrayed by the cinematic frame, this could be said in the way that cinema does. This could be said to be objectifying Connie before our very eyes, thus perhaps mirroring how society and how the outside world is viewing her, while at the same time, through the earnest nature of Joyce Chopra's cinematic craft, while at the same time presenting the subjective view of Connie and her experiences as a teenager, as a child, as someone who is just wanting to live her life. So there's the subjective viewpoint and also the objective viewpoint that is expressed within the same moment of cinematic time. And I think that this anecdote by Laura Dern encapsulates this so, so wonderfully and so vividly. So I think this is a great example of how this conversation overall is magnificent. So please check it out if you can. It is called The Women of Smooth Talk. And then to continue on with the supplements, we have uh, Joyce Chopra, Mary Kay Place, and Treat Williams. And this is also a Zoom conversation. Um, it's, I think, two conversations that are edited together. And overall, it's 22 minutes. So the first conversation is between or among Alicia Malone, Joyce Chopra, and Mary Kay Place, who plays Catherine, the mother. And that's one conversation. And then the second conversation is Alicia Malone, Joyce Chopra, and Treat Williams. And plays Arnold Friend. And so we get this edited together, or maybe the first half is more or less the Mary Kate Place conversation, and the second half is the Treat Williams conversation. The Mary Kate Place conversation is wonderful. The Treat Williams conversation is wonderful. They each talk about how they approached the work. They each talk about their own performances, the choices that they had, various interpretations about what happened. This is also very important about this film, how it maintains a sense of ambiguity. And thus, this idea of ambiguity means that scenes can be interpreted in many ways. And for example, Treat Williams talks about how he interpreted certain parts of the film that are arguably quite ambiguous. And his interpretation uh, is very interesting. This also occurs, I should I'd say in the prior supplement, The Women of Smooth Talk, there are some moments where they interpret certain actions or scenes in the film 
uh, and that is also very insightful. So this is a great conversation or set of conversations edited together. So please check it out. Mary Kay Place and Treat Williams, again, from November 2020, approximately 22 minutes. And then we have Production Design with David Wasco from October 2020. And this is approximately 18 minutes. And this is the production designer of the film. And it's an audio type of interview with photos and clips. And so, but it, it, it's, it's great because he is talking about, among other things, his career leading up to his involvement in Smooth Talk. And also, during his involvement in Smooth Talk, he talks about the various visual representations and inspirations for the look of the film. And during this conversation, he brings up references such as Joel Marowitz and Cape Light, uh, Balthus, and references such as Therese Dreaming, and also Grant Wood and American Gothic. And so this is, I think, part of that conversation about the excuse me, about the signifiers and the, the signals and signs about the, for lack of a better phrase, slice of Americana that is being displayed here and how that figures in both in a direct way and also in an ambiguous way uh, with the conversation uh, that Joyce Chopra is engaged with. So this, uh, this audio discussion, <clears throat> excuse me, from David Wasco is really quite wonderful. And so I strongly recommend uh, checking it out if you can. Uh, it's approximately 18 minutes and it's really uh, fantastic. There is a particular moment where he talks about the meaning of a particular, uh, 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 there's a particular uh, detail in uh, one of the automobiles and he talks about what he believes the meaning of that is and that's interesting too because we hear this story in another supplement from another uh, participant and how their interpretation is different from his interpretation I thought that was such an interesting detail but in any event uh, that's an example of how much this is worth checking out so uh, production design with David Wasco approximately 18 minutes and then we have uh, the Pied Piper of Tucson, and this is the March 4th, 1966 Life magazine article written by Don Moser about Charles Schmidt. And this is an audio reading of such Life magazine article. And the overall audio reading is approximately 39 minutes. And this is significant because this is, according to Joyce Carol Oates, this is the basis or the inspiration for Joyce Carol Oates' story, Where Are You Going, Where Have You Been? And she does mention this in the conversation that she was participating in with Alicia Malone and Joyce Chopra and Laura Dern about the inspiration uh, story that led to the genesis for her own work uh, by Joyce Carol Oates. So, it's good to have this as its own reference point. And so uh, uh, I recommend checking it out if you can. So it's inspiration for the inspiration for the film. And it does lead to various uh, considerations about how the story operates versus how the film operates and the similarities and differences. Uh, and so in that way, in the context of smooth talk, it's very important. And also as a story, it's very compelling and it's uh, quite frightening. And uh, so in that way, I think uh, it, it also forms a great type of, <clears throat> excuse me, a great type of basis for how to uh, regard the story uh, the Joyce Carol Oates work as well. So uh, please check it out if you can. It's approximately 39 minutes. Uh, it is an audio reading, so uh, perhaps it. Uh, I should point out that I think you can find the Life magazine uh, article elsewhere in written form, so that might be worth checking out if, uh, if you prefer reading it rather than listening to it. But in any event, here is the audio version available here through the Criterion Collection, The Pied Piper of Tucson. And then to round out the supplements, we have the trailers, the original trailer and then the 2020 uh, re-release trailer. And so they're both worth checking out. They're great trailers. 
And then we have the booklet, which is right here. Um, and I've taken the liberty of removing it prior to this video. And it's a continuation of this overall visual look of the Criterion release, which is great, by the way. And the booklet is robust and it's stapled, and I love it uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, it has, first of all, a great essay by Honor Moore called Girl Power. As I say, the essays are always wonderful with Criterion. And this is uh, another example of this. And also, there is uh, Joyce Carol Oates's When Characters from the Page Are Made Flesh on the Screen. And this is an article that's indicated as having been originally published in 1986 in the New York Times. And this is Joyce Carol Oates in her own words about how she regards the film smooth talk because as I say it is based upon her work her written work and so here she talks about uh, some of the uh, inspirations some of the differences some of the similarities and in fact there are some very significant differences between the written story and the film and this is touched upon in some of the supplements it's also touched upon here in this writing is and so uh, please check this out uh, as well again it's a further indication of the the relationship, if you will, between the written word, the story, the Joyce Carol story, and the Joyce Chopra film. Uh, so please check it out uh, in the booklet. And speaking of which, this booklet also includes the story by Joyce Carol herself. So where are you going? Where have you been? So if you haven't read it, here's your opportunity. Uh, wonderful uh, for Criterion to have included it. Uh, it's indicated as being originally published in 1966. It also has the the opening for Bob Dylan, which is touched upon in the Alicia Malone conversation. And so we have the story. And so if you want to read the story, if you haven't read it already, here is your opportunity. If you want to read it uh, uh, as part of the discussion for Smooth Talk, again, this is your opportunity. That is really wonderful. If I had to say one thing, about the presentation here. Again, I'm so glad it's included. I'm so glad it's part of the the uh, the, uh, the package uh, by Criterion of Smooth Talk. But um, one of the things about this booklet is that it has wonderful pictures from the film, uh, color pictures, and uh, uh, and they are uh, scenes and shots of the characters and uh, maybe behind the scenes looks and, and uh, those sorts of things. And they are really great, really great pictures to have. Those pictures are also accompanying the section of the booklet that is the short story. Now, I'm of two minds of this. On the one hand, I love that the pictures are included here and uh, they are helping us as we read the story to understand or to visualize what the characters might look like. And so, for instance, as, part, as we're reading the story, we have a picture here. So this is Arnold Friend. And so uh, as we're reading uh, Joyce Carol Oates' story, we can get a sense of this. And we get those uh, similar pictures that continue on toward the uh, ending of the story. And they're really lovely pictures to have, don't get me wrong. But there's something about exploring and engaging with the Joris Carol Oates work on its own merits. And I think as I'm reading it, if I see pictures from the film, it's hard for me to separate the story from the film. In other words, the images from the film automatically come into my mind as I'm reading the story if it has these pictures from the film. And so if we want to approach the story in the context of smooth talk, then maybe the inclusion of these pictures is okay. But because, for instance, there are, as I say, very strong differences between story and film, by having these pictures here, what it does, at least for me, when I read it, and I try my best to avoid it, but what it does is it, it makes it difficult for me to disassociate the written work from the film. In other words, if I see the characters, uh, I can't visualize them. Uh, I'm, I don't have the power uh, to be able to do that on my own. And so if I rely on what the pictures are, then that becomes the visualization in my head as to what these characters look like as I'm reading the Joyce Carol Oates story. So Perhaps it would have been, uh, maybe it would have been another choice to say have the book as its own separate book 
or maybe to have this section without any pictures in it, I'm not sure, to make it even more of a possibility to uh, engage with the work as it is. And then on that basis, uh, the, uh, the viewer could then try to engage in the discussion about how the film might be similar to or different from the story itself. So uh, that's one very minor criticism, uh, but it's, again, uh, to take uh, a consideration of it separately, the, the, having the pictures is great, and having the story, of course, this accessible is marvelous. So uh, I encourage you, if you haven't already, to read the Joyce Carol Oates story because it is uh, it is really brilliant reading uh, or brilliant writing and it's very engaging reading and also of course of course it is significant in the context of a discussion of smooth talks so uh, please check it out if you can so that's the booklet here again very robust very worth it so this is an overview if you like of the criterion release of smooth talk uh, it's a very nuanced, complex work, and it's sincerely told, it's earnestly told, and it covers all the various levels of complexity of life, of growing up, of transition, childhood into adulthood, again at the center of which is the brilliant performance by Laura Dern as the main character of Connie. This is Connie's story as told by Joyce Chopra. This is the film Smooth Talk. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. I very much appreciate it. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers.